Hi, hello there and uh, welcome back to the fifth part of a Paging 3 with uh, Jetpack Compose tutorial series. Now in the previous video we have uh, successfully implemented the remote uh, mediator and uh, now in this video we are going to actually send a uh, real GET request uh, to our uh, Unsplash API so we can get uh, multiple images as a response and uh, display those uh, same images in our uh, Android application. Ok, so before we actually send a GET request to our Unsplash, first uh, we need to design our application, or in this case uh, we need to design our home screen. Now before that uh, I'm going to create here a new package named the navigation, and inside that package I'm going to create uh, one uh, sealed class named uh, screen. And this uh, screen uh, sealed class will basically represent a uh, screen holder class. Now I'm going to just uh, here paste some code. And uh, basically this uh, sealed class will contain uh, two different objects. And uh, each object here uh, will represent a different screen. Now our application will have uh, two different screens. A home screen in which uh, we are going to show uh, all images from uh, Unsplash API. And the second uh, search screen uh, will be used to actually search a specific uh, image on our uh, second uh, Unsplash endpoint. So uh, now after that uh, I'm going to also create a new Kotlin file named uh, navgraph and here we are going to define our navigation graph. So I'm going to just uh, paste here some code and then I'm going to explain. So basically this uh, function named the setup navgraph uh, will contain a nav host and inside that uh, nav host we are going to define uh, all our uh, destinations. And uh, since we are going to have only two destinations, a uh, home and the search screen, uh, then we are going to have only two composable functions here. And uh, this uh, setup nav graph function uh, will be called from our main activity. So let's here first create one variable named the nav controller. And let's call here remember a nav controller without any parameters. And let's call here a setup nav graph function. And uh, let's pass this uh, nav controller. Also here we need to add this experimental paging API annotation on our main activity. There we go. Now let's uh, close that. And now I'm going to just uh, comment out this uh, search uh, screen because uh, we are not going to focus on this uh, second screen yet. In this video we are going to focus on our home screen. Now here in our root uh, package I'm going to create uh, another package named uh, screens. And uh, here I'm going to create uh, one more package named uh, home. And this uh, home package uh, will now contain a new Kotlin file named the uh, home screen. So let's create here a new composable function named the uh, home screen. And this uh, composable function will take uh, only one parameter and that is a nav controller of a type of a nav host controller. There you go. And now as you can see we are going to import that uh, same uh, home screen composable function. Let's uh, close our navigation graph for now and our screen uh, class as well. So before we actually start uh, implementing our uh, home screen, we need to create uh, one uh, custom uh, UI component which will hold our Unsplash uh, image object. And that uh, custom component uh, will be declared in a new package. So let's create here a new package named uh, common. And inside this uh, common package I'm going to create a new uh, Kotlin file named the uh, list content. So now here I'm not going to write this code manually, I'm going to just uh, paste uh, some already existing code and then I'm going to explain. Ok, so this uh, list content uh, composable function uh, will actually be used in uh, both of our screens. And uh, instead of creating uh, two different uh, composable functions for each screen, we are going to reuse this uh, composable function in our home screen as well as the uh, search screen as well. Now let me just open up this preview so I can show you how this uh, custom component uh, will actually look like. And you can see that we are using actually uh, this lazy column to display uh, multiple Unsplash images. And uh, each Unsplash image will be placed inside this uh, composable function named uh, Unsplash item. And this uh, Unsplash item has uh, already been designed. So uh, I'm not going to waste your time by writing this uh, whole code uh, manually. Instead uh, I'm going to just uh, show you what actually this code uh, will do. So here on this uh, preview you can already see how our custom Unsplash item will actually look like. So in the background let me just increase here the width of this uh, preview. So here you can see that uh, this uh, Unsplash item contains uh, one box and uh, this uh, box uh, will have a height of uh, 300 dp and uh, it will take the full width uh, of its parent. Now all its uh, items are aligned on the bottom center. And as you can see here uh, first we have designed and uh, placed the uh, image inside this uh, box 
and that uh, image will fill the maximum size of this uh, box. Now, as you can see, that uh, image in the background will actually represent our uh, unsplash image. And below that image, we have one surface. That uh, surface contains a height of uh, 40 dpi. Its uh, color is black and its alpha value is uh, content alpha medium. So we can actually see that uh, image uh, in the background. Uh, then inside this uh, surface, uh, we have one row. And inside that row, we have placed uh, one text, which says uh, photo by, then the username, and then on unsplash. So that's the actual text, uh, which uh, we need to write here in order to follow those uh, guidelines from our unsplash API. And uh, we are going to dynamically pass that uh, author username inside this uh, text as well. And after this uh, credit text, we also have this uh, one uh, heart icon and a text uh, which will display a number of likes. So this icon and this text are uh, placed inside a new composable function named the like counter. And this like counter actually contains an icon and a text. So now let me just uh, go over this list content once again. Now this list content contains a lazy column. And inside that lazy column, we are going to display a multiple unsplash images. And each unsplash image that we receive as a response from our API uh, will be placed inside this uh, unsplash item composable function. And this uh, unsplash item composable function takes uh, unsplash image as a parameter and it will place uh, all those uh, information properly in our new composable function. So first uh, we are here initializing our uh, painter. And we are fetching that uh, image uh, URL from the response of our Unsplash API. And we are also defining here an error, a placeholder and a crossfade effect to our Unsplash item. Then down below we have one box and that box basically contains uh, all those elements which you can see here. Now one more important thing here to note is that uh, here as you can see I have uh, specified a clickable modifier on our box. So whenever we click this uh, whole box uh, down below on the bottom, uh, then we are going to fire up one intent, and that intent will uh, open up a URL of that uh, image author profile on unsplash.com, of course. So as you can see here, the actual URL, which I have specified, is uh, called uh, unsplash.com, then uh, this uh, at symbol, the actual uh, author username, then here for the query, I have specified a UTM source, and then the name of my uh, actual application on uh, unsplash.com and then UTM medium referral. Now with this, we are actually following the guidelines of our Unsplash API and uh, we are allowing our users to check out the author's profile on uh, unsplash.com if uh, they like uh, one of those uh, images which we are going to display in our application. And uh, basically that's how our uh, list content uh, will actually look like. So it will contain a list of uh, those uh, Unsplash items. So now that we have designed that uh, list uh, content, uh, now we can proceed and uh, actually create uh, our home screen. Now the first uh, thing which we want to design in our home screen is a top app bar. So for that, let's open up our home package and let's create here a new composable function or a new Kotlin file first with the name of a home top bar. And now here I'm going to just uh, paste some code Let's uh, import those uh, two colors, so uh, top uh, f bar content color and uh, background color as well. And uh, this uh, home top bar composable function will take uh, only one parameter on search clicked lambda, which will trigger whenever we uh, click a search icon on our home top bar. We can also add here uh, one preview composable function, so home uh, top bar preview and let's call here a uh, home top uh, bar okay so now let's open up this preview so i can show you how this uh, actual home uh, top bar uh, will look like so basically this uh, top bar will just contain uh, one uh, title named the home and the uh, one action button our search icon and whenever we click that uh, search icon we want to navigate to our uh, search screen. So there you go. This is how our home top bar actually looks like. All right, so next let's go back to our home screen. And uh, here again, uh, I'm going to just uh, paste some code. Okay, so this uh, home screen uh, will actually contain a scaffold. And inside that uh, scaffold, we are going to place our home uh, top bar. And whenever we uh, trigger this uh, on a search uh, clicked lambda, so basically whenever we uh, click our search icon from our home uh, top bar, uh, then we want to automatically navigate to our search screen, okay? Here let me just import all those components, okay? And as a content of our scaffold, we have specified our list content, 
which we have already created, okay? So there you go. And this list content will basically display all our Unsplash images, which we are going to fetch from our Unsplash API. Also, we have here created one variable named getAllImages, and this variable assumes that we already have our home view model, and uh, since we haven't created that uh, home view model, uh, now we are going to do that. So let's uh, create here a new Kotlin class. So a uh, Kotlin class named uh, home view model. And uh, here again, uh, I'm going to just uh, paste some code. Uh, here we have uh, annotated our home view model with a hilt uh, view model annotation so that uh, we can uh, inject this repository, okay? And now here inside, we have just uh, one uh, publicly exposed variable named uh, get all images. And that variable is actually calling our uh, repository and uh, it's a get all images function. So this function will basically use our remote mediator to fetch the data from our Unsplash API and to store the result of that uh, request into our local database. From that uh, local database, we are going to actually get that data and uh, display into our home screen, okay? So now in our home view model, we have only that variable. Let's now go back to our home screen. Let's uh, import this uh, collect as a lazy paging items function. So now you can see that the type of this uh, get all images uh, variable is a lazy paging items of uh, unsplash image. And there is a uh, one uh, predefined uh, composable function named uh, collect as a lazy paging items, uh, which will allow us to collect the values from this flow of a paging data and uh, pass that response directly to our lazy column. So now you can see that we are passing this variable to our list content and this list content is using those items or those uh, images which we have received as a response to actually display all of them inside those uh, unsplash uh, image items. Now, from our home screen, we are not actually uh, getting those uh, values uh, from our API directly. Instead, uh, we are using our remote uh, mediator, and a remote uh, mediator is uh, providing those uh, data or those images from our local database. So our local database represents a, a single source of truth. So now we have uh, created our uh, home screen, we have created our uh, list content, our uh, home view model, and uh, we can finally run this application and uh, check out if uh, we are going to actually receive some uh, unsplash uh, images as a response. So let's just uh, run this application. Uh, okay, so uh, I have received uh, one error and uh, apparently I have forgot to add this uh, internet permission. So let's open up our uh, Android manifest file. And let's uh, add here uh, just uh, one uh, user's permission called the uh, internet. Okay, there you go. And now let's run this app once again. Let me check if we have an internet connection. Okay, so uh, nothing has appeared here. Uh, let me just go back to our Unsplash remote uh, mediator or our uh, list content uh, here maybe. Okay, and uh, I'm going to add one log. So let's add here uh, error. And let's call here items dot uh, load state dot to a string. So we can actually see uh, what's going on behind the scenes. Let's now run this app once again. Let's observe this uh, logcat. Uh, okay, so let me see what this is all about. We have received uh, an error. And the error said that uh, socket exception, socket failed, uh, EPERM. So if you receive this kind of error, uh, that means that you need to uninstall this application from your Android emulator. And uh, you need to install this application once again. And now let's run this app. Okay, so now there we go. As you can see, we have successfully received the actual response from our Unsplash API. Okay, and uh, each and every Unsplash image is uh, displayed inside this uh, Unsplash item composable function, which contains an image as a background. It contains uh, this uh, black row on the bottom, and that row will display the actual username of that specific author of that image and the number of likes as well. So as you can see, we can see a different uh, users uh, in this uh, text, which is changing dynamically based on the values which we receive from our API. And when we scroll down below, we can also see that the placeholder uh, image as well and this uh, crossfade effect. So it looks uh, beautiful, okay? And uh, now uh, that uh, everything works uh, here uh, perfectly fine, now I'm going to uninstall this application once again from my Android emulator. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to run this application for the first time once again. And also I'm going to observe our local database. So you can see how our local database 
uh, will automatically be filled up with uh, that data which we receive from our API. So as you can see, now we can see all those uh, same images. Let me just open our uh, Unsplash image table. Let's check this live updates uh, option so we can see the changes uh, live here uh, as we scroll to this uh, database. Okay, so now you can see that our database uh, has been filled with uh, many different uh, image items. So now you can see that uh, in our image database here, we can see 40 different uh, Unsplash images, which our remote uh, mediator has successfully fetched and uh, stored or cached inside our database. Now we have specified in our remote uh, mediator that uh, each and every page which we request from our Unsplash API uh, will contain uh, 10 different Unsplash images. And by default, our remote mediator will initially load uh, multiple pages of the data from our Unsplash API. And the reason is because uh, when we scroll down below, we want to have uh, those uh, images already cached and we don't want to cache uh, each and every image uh, after we scroll here uh, one by one, okay? And that's why our remote uh, mediator is uh, smart enough to request uh, multiple pages at our initial load, okay? And that's why we can see 40 different items here. So each item contains a unique ID, a number of likes, the actual image URL, a username of that author, and a profile URL of that same author as well. Now let me just open this uh, Unsplash remote keys table so I can show you. So this uh, table also contains uh, 40 different uh, items here. And you can see that uh, the first uh, 10 items contain the same previous and the same next page keys, okay? So first uh, 10 items, which we receive from our uh, Unsplash API, are actually the first uh, page, okay? And uh, since this is the first page, then the previous page is a null, and the next page is number 2. And that's how our remote uh, mediator can know uh, which page to request next. Now the second page starts from number 11 to number 20, okay? And that's the second page. And the second page contains the previous page of number 1 and the next page of number 3. And next we also have the third page from number 21 to number 30. And this uh, third page contains the previous page uh, of number 2 and the next page of number 4. And uh, so on and so on, okay? Now let's see uh, what will happen when we scroll our uh, list here to the bottom. So for now you can see that we have uh, cached uh, successfully 40 different uh, Unsplash images. And here we can see the maximum number of uh, 50 items uh, from our database, okay? Now let's uh, just uh, scroll uh, all the way down. So we can see how our remote mediator will load uh, more images. So now that we have scrolled uh, all the way down, you can see that uh, automatically our remote uh, mediator has uh, fetched uh, more data. So now we have a uh, 42, 43, 44, 45 and so on. So this is our last uh, item of number 50. Let's also scroll down below uh, a little bit more so we can request some more data from our uh, Unsplash API. And now let's check the other page. So now we have, uh, as you can see, 51, 52, 53, up to a 70. And whenever we scroll uh, through our lazy column list, we are going to receive a new items uh, automatically by our remote mediator, okay? And uh, even if we just uh, disable our internet connection and run this application once again, we will be able to see all that data in our uh, Android application. So there we go. All those images and uh, all that data is now cached in our database and we can display that without a problem. So as you can see, we can see all those images. Now, some of those images uh, may not be uh, cached uh, successfully. And uh, in that case, you are going to see this uh, placeholder image by default. But whenever you uh, enable this internet connection, then you are going to be able to see those uh, images which are uh, already cached in your database. So as you can see now, we can actually see all those images. Okay, so there we go. Everything works uh, perfectly fine. And now we can also trigger this uh, click listener on this uh, box. So if I press on this uh, little uh, black uh, component uh, down below, then we're going to immediately open up a URL on uh, unsplash.com and uh, we are going to see and uh, open up the actual profile of that uh, image author on unsplash.com, of course. So there we go. 
everything works uh, here uh, as expected. And you have already seen how our unsplash remote keys uh, table and our unsplash image table are uh, filled uh, automatically by our remote mediator whenever we scroll through our list. Now, I hope that you have enjoyed uh, watching this video. You have seen how our remote uh, mediator is uh, storing the response from our API automatically in our local database and how those items are uh, automatically displayed in our uh, home screen, in our lazy column actually. And whenever we scroll through our list on the bottom, our remote uh, mediator will automatically fetch a new data so we can never run out of the data. And even if we don't have an internet connection, we are going to still be able to show those uh, same images to our user because all those images and that data is actually cached in our local database. So uh, for this video that will be all. Uh, be sure to comment down below if you have uh, any questions about uh, Remote Mediator and this project in general. For now we have successfully designed our home screen and uh, implemented the Remote Mediator. And in the next video, I hope a final video, we are going to implement the second endpoint from our Unsplash API and that endpoint uh, will be used to search a specific images on uh, unsplash.com. So with that uh, next video we are going to finish this little application and uh, after that uh, you are going to have a full knowledge about uh, using a paging tree library along with a remote mediator with a Jetpack Compose. For this video that will be all.